happy Aloha Friday and welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host Beatrice Cantelmo. For today's episode, we are graced with a very special guest, Anne Weber. When I think of women of great influence and who have the gift of inspiring others to do good things, I think of her. Anne is a teacher and also community director of Impact Hub Honolulu. We'll hear her perspectives on what it means to lead with aloha, the importance of what it means to do good and well in our work, in our community and with each other. And of course, we will be talking about the implications of an interconnected and interdependent Hawaii to a global network such as Impact Hub. On that note, thank you and welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. It's great, great to be here. I am very excited to have you here. I know this is not your first time in uh, our studio, but it's been a few years. Mm -hmm. So uh, to give our viewers a little background uh, about you, would you mind telling uh, us a little bit of um, your upbringing? Where were you raised? And uh, your, uh, I know you're a teacher, so, so that people can get a little no, sure. Flavor. Of course, of course. Um, so I was raised in Los Angeles. I grew up in um, historic West Adams, which if you're a USC fan, it's right there. Um, I went to Loyola Marymount University. So I actually, I was raised at um, Jesuit schools through my whole education. And so this idea of service in education is incredibly important. And it always has been in my life. Um, so after I graduated from university, I was working, you know, I had a job after college and I was so excited, um, but it wasn't meaningful. I wasn't helping anyone that really needed it. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I came into education. Um, so my parents were both educators. They were both public school educators in inner city LA. Mm -hmm. And I always knew the value of education. They would always communicate that to me. Um, and I knew that that was a way that I could really give back. Right, make um, such an impactful difference in mm -hmm. people's lives. Yeah. yeah, so I joined Teach for America in 2013 mm -hmm. and taught out at Maile Elementary in Waianae for four years, third grade. Is that what brought you to Hawaii? It is. Mm -hmm. How amazing. So uh, Teach for America in Hawaii. And what was your perspective of Hawaii before you moved here? And now, mm -hmm. uh, almost six years later, right? Yeah, I had, I had never visited before. Uh -huh. So I agreed to move absolutely knowing nothing beyond the research I had done. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I wanted to teach on the Leeward Coast. Um, I'm Native American, I'm Cherokee and Choctaw. So mm -hmm. I thought, I, I knew that I wanted to be in an area that was rural, serving an underserved community, mm -hmm. and I loved it. It was the perfect match. It was... I, I learned so much. Um, and yeah. you served, and that is an area that I think Hawaii really needs a lot of additional boost and help with, which is our educational system. And so grateful that you, you know, have landed on uh, these islands, you know, um, with that kind of ticket. You know? Yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm grateful to have been in the position as <laughs> oh, well. Absolutely. So, it, you know, I mean... Yeah. I, I'm no one's savior by any means, so it so was which, just a meaningful way for me to serve. Which grades uh, did you teach? In I taught subject? third grade. Oh, third mm -hmm. grade, you're great, great it's, age. It's a, wonderful, yeah. it's a wonderful age. They're intellectual, they can have right. conversations, but you know, I'm not an old lady yet, so they, they still liked me. <laughs> Hey, old ladies can be really hip and cool as teachers too, you know. <laughs> well, they didn't see me as that, that, that yet. That, that, <laughs> that's, that's a good thing, you know. So, okay, so uh, from being a teacher to community director of Impact Hub, mm -hmm. tell us about that transition and also to our viewers who don't know what Impact Hub is, just give it a little blurb, you know, Absolutely. what this amazing place mm -hmm. is all about. So Impact Hub Honolulu is a place where you can do good and do well. We have co-working space, which is um, collaborative workspace. We have offices, we have meeting rooms, we have event space. Um, but in essence, we're a community space for social impact. So you can come in, you can be with a, a motivated and productive community, you can get your work done, and you can hopefully learn a little bit in the meantime. That's what I'm really, I'm passionate about the education side because it shouldn't end after school. 
So um, we were talking about the social impact uh, of uh, Impact Hub, uh, not only for the community, but for the state at large, but also if we think in terms of uh, um, micro perspective, because Impact Hub is all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. And how do you see all of that um, working together, you know, not only for our members, but for the community who are not members here, but also in this microcosm that we call, you know, Earth with Impact Hub being spread out, you know, so many different ways. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really like Teach for America, it's a global organization mm -hmm. with very ambitious vision. Right. So the idea of Everyone's working locally and translocally to make social impact happen, and mm -hmm. that, that can be felt globally. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the way that we focus our work, is we want to make an impact in our community, in our local community, throughout the state. Mm -hmm. um, our vision is to connect all of the islands so that we can be a real, a real beacon of, mm -hmm. of a lot of the, the examples of impact that we have here. Um, Hawaii is doing incredible things in climate justice, in education, um, and most of the stories you hear, unfortunately, are the negative sides of that. Right. But I think that we also have the opportunity to be leaders in mm -hmm. that front. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure lots of people would agree with that as well. Yeah. So we're so, not working alone. No, <laughs> not at all. And you know, it's very easy to feel isolated. And I, you know, like I can attest to the power I'm a believer of Impact Harbor because I've been a member since I moved here. And mm -hmm. actually, my first friends, um, you know, were made in Hawaii through Impact Harbor community. And uh, it used to be in a different location. And right across the street from um, Kaka'ako uh, Park, and I did a lot of work with uh, houseless families and children, and I will never forget uh, uh, the part of social impact that Impact Hub at the time had in the lives of these children, not only in terms of opening spaces for them to come in when the space was not being utilized by members to welcome people who traditionally have their door shut to them all the time, but also the part of right before Christmas to open the I was doors. There for that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, we saw so many children walking with their parents, you know, it was like over 40 people, you know, and to watch a movie, eat popcorn and just a regular meal and just have a sense of normalcy and belonging. Mm -hmm. You know, that really was very impactful, I think, you know, not only me as a servant leader, but as a member of, you know, Impact Hub, but in this community. And I think the most beautiful thing about it is that it happened, it did not make the news, it was just a normal thing to do, you mm -hmm. know, and it was really beautiful. And there's so many other things too, like people connecting and helping each other. There's so many beautiful stories. So in terms of, um, you know, your vision right now with Impact Hub, what are you all working with? Like, wh which direction does Impact Hub Honolulu is taking with mm -hmm. regards to social justice and service? Sure, I'll, I'll tell you a story that starts with the first time I went to the Impact Hub Global Gathering um, this past year. So it was in Montreal, and I had the pleasure of meeting all of the other North American makers as well. Um, so this was my first interaction with Global, and one of the stories that was shared was from um, Impact Hub Oakland, where they're doing a lot of work in houselessness as well, and that's, that's an issue here locally, mm -hmm. or it, it, it's, it's something that invites solutions, I'll right? say. Yes, yes. Um, the term that David, the founder there, used was they're trying to cultivate in their community a sense of radical belonging. So for people that, you know, typically don't even get your attention, um, it, it's important to bring them into solving problems. Um, so I think that that's what really sets us apart. Mm -hmm. um, every Saturday, we are involved in a, a cleanup at Kakaako Waterfront Park. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the only, the, the point of the cleanup is obviously to beautify the park, 
but also to just build community. Yes, we're, exposure. We're neighbors. Yeah. We're all part of the same community. And if you can just build those relationships and humanize and bring people together over a meal, mm -hmm. then I think that anything can really be built from there. Mm -hmm. That's how you really come up with solutions. When you have respect there, when you have relationships, when you can listen to each other and mm -hmm. not just, you know, solve a problem to someone or at someone, but with someone. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think like when you're talking about social impact and the importance of uh, interconnectedness, you know, in this uh, process is quite crucial to make it happen. But also for the sustainability of it uh, and uh, where everybody is an equal partner and community builder and solution oriented. It's not uh, us, us as them, uh, no hand downs, you know, it's a more equalized, I mm -hmm. think, level, not only of thinking, but of leading also. And that, like, you know, I've been in Hawaii for almost five years now, and one of the things I feel that we need more are spaces where, um, if you really want to change Hawaii, you're going to have to really work together and recognize and do things where the most vulnerable are, you know, not only seen, but dealt with the proper reverence and value and care that it deserves. So I know the homelessness is one of the many issues, you know, we you know about education, health, and so forth. So are there any events in uh, our community as Impact Hub that's going on that are addressing and inviting the community to be a part of mm -hmm. this, this knowledge and, and of this movement? Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking. So yeah. a lot of the programs that we put on um, as Impact Hub are to increase impact throughout the community, but also to increase education. So mm -hmm. a couple of the upcoming programs we have, um, one of them is called Oceans, the Human Impact, mm -hmm. and that's going to be on April 11th in the evening. And it's a free talk story between um, uh, Paul LeCompte, who uh, his brother swam from Japan to Honolulu, and every three minutes saw microplastics on his swim. So it's, he's going to share that journey and also a message about, you know, what the plastics are actually doing to our ocean. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Dan Kinzer, who is a National Geographic educator fellow who got the opportunity to go down to Antarctica and see exactly what's happening with the polar ice caps. So having these, uh, or with the Antarctic ice caps, <laughs> excuse me. No, no um, so having these, <laughs> these, two, these two stories alongside of each other, and then them having conversation with each other, um, that's, that's one of the upcoming events. And so that's going to be all around climate justice. And then nice. the next one is a partnership that we have with um, PBS Hawaii. It's called Indy Lens Pop-Up. And these are films. There's a series of six films, but we have... Uh, the next one is going to be uh, "Won't You Be My Neighbor, Mr. Mm -hmm. Rogers?" I don't know yeah, who if you that. Oh, of course, you mm -hmm. know my kid is twenty-four years old now. We totally were like super big fans of <laughs> Mr. Rogers. Yeah. So this yeah. one, it's a free film, uh -huh. but the the whole point of watching the film is to then have conversations yes. about the film. Um, and the theme of this year is perfect for what we've been talking about because it's all about being a good neighbor. Yeah, what constitutes a good neighbor, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, what is our role as neighbors and, and how do we make it better? Exactly. Know, that's really great. We need to take a minute break. We'll be right back on this. <laughs> hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. 
Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po. Mabuhay and aloha. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice. Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host, Beatrice Kantawa, and we are here with Anne Weber. So, Anne, uh, so we were talking about uh, um, the next uh, uh, lenses uh, series with uh, uh, mm -hmm. with PBS with, Hawaii. With PBS so Hawaii, yes. the indie lens pop up films um, are all about getting people together to watch mm -hmm. a film and talk about social justice issues following right. the film. So all of them are linked by this theme of being a good neighbor. Mm -hmm. But what is our relationship in that? What is our responsibility as a neighbor, not just in receiving, but in also in giving? giving and fostering, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in strengthening relationships mm -hmm. too, you know, or engaging. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really initiating. excited about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, uh, those are just a couple of the mm -hmm. events that we have. And you can see the full list on impacthubhnl.com. Mm -hmm. Um, we have multiple events a week. Right. Some, of, some of them are Amnesty International yes, films, that is so we're happy to partner with all types of yeah, local absolutely. organizations um, because we want to be that community space mm -hmm. yeah. where all are welcome, where you feel like you belong, and mm -hmm. you can also have a really productive, motivated community of people. Get your right. work done. Yeah, because I mean, I think a lot of stems from exposure and education. I mean, you cannot uh, um, create a grassroots movement and a sense of uh, deep um, investment in civic engagement, you don't feel inspired, I would say, mm -hmm. or if it doesn't hit your radar. And I think most people, you know, I mean, they're so busy. They're working, taking care of life, family, and having these opportunities, these glimpses, you know, where you go, gee, you know, maybe there are more things I can do in adjusting my own daily life and in, invite my coworkers and friends to, you know, and family to think similarly, or at least to take some action, you know, it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. So you were mentioning about um, social justice being one of the, you know, cornerstones of what Impact Hub stands for all over the globe mm -hmm. and here in Hawaii. So uh, what are the plans for Hawaii and the sure. upcoming Yes, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have a vision for sure. five years or ten years yeah. or you know, whatever mm -hmm. time it is. So all of the impact hubs are joined in a commitment to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. These are 17 very ambitious goals um, by 2030. Mm -hmm. So we're getting closer and closer to that mark. And so as we have been um, progressing toward them, we've been focusing a lot on education, mm -hmm. sustainability, and also technology. We think that those are three very interrelated mm -hmm. and, and also very important for Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in terms so, of sustainability, uh, what are the areas that um, you, your um, members and, and community partners and allies are looking at? Mm -hmm. So it's not just environmental sustainability, mm -hmm. which, which I think is, you know, making, very it's huge here. Yes. It's, it's very important to any island. Um, but also sustainability as a community. Mm -hmm. So resilience. How are we, you know, ensuring that our communities are growing responsibly and that we're allocating resources responsibly as well? Um, but what I was, So accountability is a big part of this exactly. process too, mm -hmm. yes. So we're hoping by the end of this year to have the first um, voluntary local review in Hawaii mm -hmm. um, for the UN SDGs. So we've convened a working group um, of different organizations that are working around the SDGs to really think about how do we let the public know what's, what's going on? What are these goals? Because mm -hmm. as, as a teacher, I know that if you don't tell someone what the goal is, 
<laughs> they're not going to know to work toward exactly. it. Exactly, <laughs> and 2030 is really around the corner. It is. It goes like mm -hmm. in a blink of an eye. Yeah. So we've been doing programs around like sharing the local successes. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's all building toward programs about, okay, so where are we at in terms of our, all of the goals? Where yes. do we need to focus our energy? Yeah. Where are the opportunities? Exactly. Um, and so that's really yeah. exciting. And I like that approach too. I just came back from a shared leadership retreat uh, through uh, Amnesty International USA in Washington DC in February. And uh, we had uh, people from uh, all over the country coming together to work uh, with um, vision and mission you know, for Amnesty in the upcoming five, ten years. And uh, we already know the problems. And I think it's important to, you know, uh, give its proper value and space to it. But so much of the energy is a lot of times stagnant or, or it stops there. You know, that there has to be more of this movement of what is the vision and, and let's dream outside the box. Let's dream as if there are no barriers. And let's uh, come up with plans based on that. And then you work out with the constraints mm -hmm. and then with the elimination yeah. of the constraints too, yeah. you know. You're absolutely so. talking my language. I think it's the... That's the, why we're good friends. <laughs> <laughs> the, the educator in me yeah. loves this idea of like, okay, we have these ambitious goals. What's the roadmap? Exactly. How are we going to yeah. get yeah. there? Yeah. Um, as a team, we've been thinking a lot about our mission and vision. And that's something that we look at every single year. Mm -hmm. on is it still true to where we're headed right, and yeah. are our goals are and the actual alignment. actions yeah. in alignment with that mission yeah. that we want to create um, so we we recently updated it and it's to connect inspire and engage to make the world more a better place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very broad so we were torn between like how do we you know make it specific enough but also broad enough to give it right. to give it the room yeah. that it needs um, but the idea there is that one of the actions for that is we need to have an, a network of impact hubs that are accessible all over the state of Hawaii so right. that it's not just you're in town, you have access to this community. Yeah. I mean, it's not so Honolulu centric. Right, exactly. Everything happens so mm -hmm. much here. Yeah. I, this is so beautiful that you are having this vision of expanding making it more accessible. So are there any plans for growth and yeah. expansion in different parts mm -hmm. of the island or perhaps all the islands across the state? Absolutely. So we're hoping for um, three more spaces on Oahu within the next year or so. Um, and then also the plans are to expand to other islands as well mm -hmm. because we can learn a lot from the other islands. And I mean, just imagine what could be possible if we really truly did have a community that was connected yes. like that. So oh, it doesn't matter where yeah. you are, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're flying to another island, you still have your people, yeah. your community. And every island has its own beat and mm -hmm. stories. And, uh, you know, I travel a lot for work, and it's quite a night and day difference uh, between, for example, here, Molokai, Lanai, Maui, so Hawaii, different. even the weather, big islands, <laughs> you know, and so, you know, and we, we do need those differences and uh, that kind of diversity well, to make it truly inclusive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's what's kind of awesome about the Impact Hub Global Network as well, is they're all independently owned and operated. So you, you walk into, unlike a lot of the, the larger co-working chains, you walk into one and it's going to be exactly the same whether you're in... Atlanta, whether you're in LA, whether you're in Berlin, mm -hmm. you know what you're going to get. But with an impact hub, they're very locally based. Yeah. So you walk in and you, it's going to be the flavor of the, the place and of the community, community and the people exactly. because it's the people that are making the place. It's yeah. not the walls. It's not the space. It's the people that are there yeah. talking with yeah. each other. And you do get, uh, you know, that beat. It's really nice. Like when I travel to a different state, I always make a, a, a point of visiting a local impact hub and just get that feel. You know, it's instant ohana. Yeah, you exactly. Know, it's a great way to connect mm -hmm. this way. And I also think, you know, that in terms of entrepreneurship opportunities, you know, uh, co-working spaces is the way to go. 
not only from a cost efficient, you know, sustainable way of being able to even dream mm -hmm. of doing something as an entrepreneur, but also the part of um, collaborative efforts and those connections that stem, uh, you know, from being a part of, you know, this kind of environment, mm -hmm. you know. So, do you have any like stories, like I, favorite stories yeah. that you'd like to well, share? One of my favorites is you and um, Mike, Ice Hawaii yeah. and Mike. Um, I, I just, it, but that just speaks to the, the unexpected collaboration that yeah. you can see. And it's really beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I'll tell a little bit about it. Yeah, I, I know he was just gazing through the window. You know, you could see he was really troubled that day. And I had no idea what he was working on and what the challenges were. Mm -hmm. I said, what's going on? You know, you're very pensive. And he's like, yeah, I'm thinking about how is this, you know, ice business is going to, you know, flow and I don't have... Uh, many connections out there in the community and those that I had is just not flowing, you know. And so we started brainstorming that like I wanted to learn where he's been and knocks, those that he had knocked uh, and the no's and the barriers and all of that. And then you know, just downed it to me. I said, you know, how about the fishing like industry and parks, you know? He's like, oh, I guess I didn't think about that. And I, so I connected him with then, uh, uh, Dean, Dean Sensui, who uh, is a wonderful cinematographer, and I said he connects really well with uh, the fishery industry. Why don't you go go for a boat ride with him and see what happens? And mm -hmm. I guess you can finalize what the the end of the story was. You yeah, know? yeah, he you. You gave him the introduction and he made it happen. Yeah. And now it's actually what's awesome is that it's the ice machine, the ice business there and the um, Wainai Boat Harbor is like the water supply for Puuhonua Owainai. Yes. So there's a whole it's, community there that gets to be yeah. served by this, and this the, introduction. Yeah. And I'm so happy about because the older talk we had was, you know, think about the houseless communities and uh, how they could benefit from having access to water, clean water supply and ice. I wasn't quite sure about that, but I think, you know, it kind of it kind of evolved very organically. Exactly. And now it's like, what's the next step, you know? Well, and that's the beauty of, you know, you take this idea of doing good and doing well, and you can do both. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. I think the old model was really, you know, you work really hard and you save all of your money, you do well in your business, and then maybe you'll be able to, you know, save enough money that you can give back to the community. Mm -hmm. But I think now we really want to share that message of you can start now. It yeah. can be, you Don't know, wait it's, until it's you're also, 60, 70 or retire. Exactly. It's also yeah, very marketable. So if you're able to think about social impact as a way to grow your business, then I think that that mindset shift alone is what we're really trying to, to share with yeah. everyone. Um, because it doesn't have to be, it, you don't have to be a martyr to do well or Absolutely. to do to do good in the world. Or to have so much money. You yeah. Know, I think the social capital is really the new currents of absolutely you know like a society that we want to see you know that's more sustainable and equal you know and that thrives oh my darling i can't believe the 30 minutes have flown by <laughs> this quickly so we are out of time but thank you so much for uh, granting us and our viewers um you know your presence and uh, your lovely spirit and energy thank you so much for what you do for impact hub in our community i hope to have you back uh, as a you know a guest many more times and Great. Uh, yeah we can and get some members here to share stories. i would love that <laughs> you know this this is what this space is about it is about an open platform where we get to talk about collective impact and social justice perspectives and it can be from any part of the world but we definitely want the flavor of hawaii and and how much of hawaii you know, examples can be emulated in other oh, parts absolutely. of the world too. Mm -hmm. So it is really about those bridges. So anyone who feels excited to come, you know, you're welcome to. <laughs> All right. Well, this concludes our episode of Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech. How about you for today? 
Uh, thank you so much, our viewers, for watching us. And until next time, we hope.